Hello. There are a number of useful tutorials online for how to carry out and interpret uh, various uh, statistical analyses and results. So um, in particular, there are some really good ones here at the Institute for Digital Research and Education at UCLA. And what I thought I would do is to kind of bring you to a site on logistic regression where the authors uh, discuss or uh, provide a demonstration of SPSS with annotated output. So at this particular web page, uh, there's a nice walkthrough of how to run logistic regression and how to interpret uh, the results, or at least how to make sense out of the different pieces of information in the output. Um, the one downside is that the demonstration really relies on using syntax. So if you're not really familiar with syntax, um, then you might feel like it's a little bit more cumbersome than it needs to be. So what I thought I would do is just uh, show you how to obtain the output using uh, the SPSS menus. So what I'm going to do is include a link, uh, this link right here underneath the video description so that you can uh, go to this site and essentially obtain a copy of the data and uh, follow through using the video uh, with the uh, demonstration of uh, the results um, obtained using the menus. So first off, let me note. To, oh, let me also note that there will also be some, several other links underneath the video description uh, that link up to a couple of other videos that I have on the same topic uh, using some other examples. So we'll begin just by uh, if you'll click on this link right here. Um, it links up to a, a, an SPSS data file, and so you can obtain the data. So I'm just going to right-click here, open and link a new tab, and then open up the data set, and this is it right here. So we have basically uh, data, uh, our student data. So the variables that we're going to be working with are SES. This is an ordinal variable, and I'm going to double-click on this, go under Variable View, so that you'll see that SES is an ordinal variable. It's coded 1 for low, 2 for medium, and 3 for high. And I'm going to go back under the Data View here, and we also are going to be working with the Read variable. We're going to be working with the Science variable, and then we're going to be taking the Write variable and actually dichotomizing it. So, um, and I will mention that the authors um, really kind of strongly suggest don't, don't do this with continuous variables, and I heartily agree with that assessment uh, that you don't generally want to dichotomize or, um, or, or create categorical variables from continuous variables for your analyses. So they basically d uh, state that they're doing this um, essentially for the purpose of the illustration. So what we're going to do then is we are going to go ahead and, and dichotomize this variable, uh, with the right variable, by going to transform compute variable. And under here, we are going to create a new variable. It's just going to be called H-O-N-O-R-C-O-M-P for honors comp. Or rather, just to be completely uh, the same as what they used in their demonstration, we'll just uh, kind of set this to H-O-N-C-O-M-P, but basically the target variable uh, is an arbitrary name that you are um, for the variable that's being created. Next, we're going to type in the word write. That's the variable that we are going to be dichotomizing in our data set. We're going to type in G-E, and then they are dichotomizing at a value of 60 on the write variable. So we're going to click on OK, and so now in our data set, we have our new variable that's called onComp or honors comp. So it's coded 0 and 1. So basically 0 is going to reflect essentially those individuals who scored um, low or lower on right, whereas 1 uh, is reflecting those individuals who scored higher on the right variable. So to run the analysis, uh, the basic logistic regression that's in uh, on that particular web page, we're just going to go to regression, binary logistic, we're going to move our honors comp variable over to the dependent box. We're going to move the science score to covariates, and we're going to move the reading score covariates as well. SES, we're going to move over, and like I said, this variable is going to be treated as a categorical variable. So we're going to click on categorical and move SES over here. So now you'll see that some defaults appear. First off, you'll see it says reference category. So the reference category is the group uh, that is coded 3 in this data set uh, on that particular variable. So that's going to actually be the high SES uh, individuals. If I wanted to change this so that the first category, um, which is low SES, 
uh, is selected, then I could do that as well. I could just you know click on first, click on change, and there you go. You'll see that. But we're going to stick with the presentation as it's given. So I'm going to move back to last, click on change, and then continue. And so what's going to happen is is that when you uh, run the regression analysis, SPSS is going to take that original categorical variable and create uh, two new dummy variables that are included in the logistic regression. Uh, a couple of other things, we'll go ahead and click on options right here and Hosmer Lima show goodness of fit and confidence intervals for the odds ratios. And like I said, these are not presented on the site, but these are things that I typically ask for uh, when I'm running a logistic regression. So I'm going to uh, stick with that. So I'm going to click on continue and then on OK and so now we have our output. So first off um, you'll see that under logistic regression we've got uh, dependent variable encoding so it's just basically the dependent variable has been coded 0 and 1. The dummy variables are dummy 1 and dummy 2 right here and you'll see it's the SES variable that's been recoded into the, these two dummy variables. The high group is coded 0 across these two dummy variables. The middle group is coded 0 and 1. And the low group is coded 1 and 0, respectively. When you scroll down, you'll see uh, block 0. This is basically uh, output that's related to a null or intercept only model. And it's not terribly useful except as uh, to serve as a baseline or a reference um, uh, model against the full model that contains uh, the full set of predictors. So we're going to scroll down. You'll see that, that we have block one right here. Basically right here we've got the likelihood ratio chi-square test, which is a test uh, to determine uh, whether our model that contains the full set of predictors represents a significant improvement over the null or intercept only model. And you can see that we have statistical significance, so that would be interpreted uh, in that way. So we would say that our model containing the full set of predictors is a significant improvement in fit relative to the null model. Here we've got Hosmer and show goodness of fit test. Uh, actually, non-significance for this is an indicator of good fit, and so that actually is the case for our data. We have a couple of pseudo R-square values right here. There's Cox and Snell and Nagel-Kirke pseudo R-squares. There's not a whole lot of guidance in literature on how to interpret this. These are not inter these are not computed in the same way that the R-square value is in least squares regression. So you do want to kind of uh, interpret these sort of cautiously. We'll scroll down. You'll now see that we have a classification table, which basically is used to determine how well our model predicts group membership uh, on the dependent variable. So you'll see that uh, right here we've got a 79.5% indicating that the model uh, correctly uh, predicts group membership at a rate of around uh, roughly 80%. Um, it does a better job in terms of predicting who's not going to fall into the group that's coded one. So basically the honors comp group zero, roughly 90% are correctly classified. Whereas those for those who are um, in uh, group one, 50% or roughly 50.9% are correctly classified into that group. So the model does a better job of predicting who's not going to be in the group coded one. Basically that's the group coded zero uh, and does a worse job in terms of predicting who's in the honors comp uh, group one category. Then finally we have the variables in the equation down at the bottom. Um, and so you've got the regression coefficient, standard errors, wall tests, and significance levels that are given. Uh, the EXPB are the odds ratios, and then we have confidence intervals for those odds ratios. So you can see that uh, first off with SES right here, you can see that SES, uh, this does not have a, um, a regression coefficient or standard error or anything. Basically, uh, this is kind of uh, just a, a placeholder for group three, which is our baseline or reference category for the SES variable. Then we've got the um, SES1 and SES2, which are dummy variables uh, comparing uh, the other groups against that baseline category. Then you have right here, you've got uh, the regression coefficients for science and reading. Uh, both of these are positive and both of these are statistically significant, essentially indicating that individuals who are scoring higher on science and reading uh, were more likely to be cat uh, categorized into uh, honors uh, comp group one.
So as you scroll down the page, uh, you'll come across uh, this piece of output. It's cross tabs female by uh, honors comp. Um, and down below, you'll see that you've got statistics and risk. So we can get those pieces of information pretty easily, uh, basically just by going to analyze descriptive statistics cross tabs. And we just move the female variable over to row, uh, honors comp to column right here. Under statistics, we'll also click on risk and continue and then on OK. And so now you can see that we have uh, both pieces of output, uh, the cross tabs and then the risk estimates that are provided on that page. Finally, at the bottom of the page, there's one uh, additional example. It's just a logistic regression with honors comp regressed onto female. And then right here, they're asking for the, um, the confidence intervals for the odds ratios, which I demonstrated previously. But just to, for uh, the sake of complete, completeness, we'll just go back. We'll go to analyze regression. Binary logistic right here. I'm just going to reset everything. Move honors comp to the dependent box. Female right here under options. We'll go ahead and ask for Hosmer and Lehman Show again. And then the, the key is right here where it says confidence intervals for um, the odds ratios. We'll click on continue and then on OK. And when we scroll down, you'll get the regression um, uh, coefficients. There's female coefficients, 0.651, et cetera. And again, if we just compare it against the results, it's exactly the same thing on this particular page. So this concludes our walkthrough. Again, I'm going to include links to some uh, examples, uh, videos uh, that I have made on uh, logistic regression. So be sure to check those out uh, in addition to um, going to this page right here. So I appreciate you watching.